Welcome everybody. My name is Peter and this is just another day on the internet. Uh, this video is sponsored by Squarespace once again and I have to say that because FTC guidelines stipulate that any sponsored videos have to be disclosed verbally within the first 30 seconds of the video and graphically for seven seconds within the first 30 seconds of the video. I don't know why I just told you all that, but now you know. And I do have a real treat for you today. Ah, uh, no, sorry, that one actually is for me, a reward for so dutifully riding my bike for seven days in a row. Uh, it did have more sprinkles on it when I first bought it, but a lot of them fell off on the way home. But congratulations, good job on the steady bike riding, Peter. Oh, thank you, Peter. Oh, here's the rest of the sprinkles that were supposed to be on it. I'll eat the sprinkles first and chase them with the treat. Hmm. Here is, uh, we'll call it 15 seconds of footage of me riding my bike the other day. Very nice. Now, let's get down to it. What we're up to today is what you may have gathered from the title. Ten pens, ten inks, and ten drawings. Let's get introduced to the stars of our show, the pens. I happen to have ten different demonstrator pens. That's right, they're all pretty clear. And here they are. I've put different inks in all of them. Let me um, lay them all out and name them each for you. Oh, dropping them. Caught it between my legs. The Hex Pen, Lammy Safari, J. Herbin, Noodler Triple Tail, Moon Man T1, Pen BBS 266, Twisby Eco, Moon Man C1, Moon Man M2, I think that's right. Yeah, I could have gotten this confused. And then finally, um, this little pen, which I have really no idea what it is. It has no identifying marks on it uh, as far as branding. So I'm just not sure. It's just a pen. But I'm going to draw a picture with each one of these, which has a different, each pen has a different ink. So as I draw a picture with each one, I'm going to talk about each pen, each ink, and each drawing. And so, here's all the inks I'm using today. Most of these, uh, let's see, there's six Noodlers inks, and then four Colorverse inks. Now, Noodlers, two of these, I think two of these I've used before, Actually, three of these I've used before. These three right here I've used in previous videos. I haven't used these seven before. Okay, no, everything's fine. This one doesn't like lying on its back. Uh, Noodler just sent me a big package of a bunch of inks, and there's, they're the same distributor for these. These are Colorverse inks, these, these ones. These are all Colorverse inks, so uh, same distributor that, that sends out all of these, so um, yeah. But first, briefly, I want to introduce you to a special guest, Jed the Zed, a zombie sock puppet who is here to discuss with us the benefits of using Squarespace to create and host your own website. I love using Squarespace to make my own website. It's so easy and simple. You can just select a template from all these templates in a list of categories. It's very easy to find them and well, it's hard to choose because they all look so good. Right, I agree. They all do look frustratingly good. What do you use yours for? Oh, just to find other brain enthusiasts. Stuff like that. Oh, well, can I join? Oh, well, you can if you want to, but I don't think you would like it. 
I'll come check out your website. Maybe. I'm sure it's very nice considering it's a Squarespace website. Where can we find out more? From what I've heard, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Peter Draws for 10% off your first website or domain. That's right. Thanks for joining me here today, Jed. Good to see you. We'll catch up with you later. Okay, so we're gonna start with the first pen here. This is the little sketchbook I'm gonna be drawing in. Uh, there's a few other things in here. This is the type it is, Traveler's Notebook. Made in Japan, travelerscompany.com. Basically, I wanted to find a little sketchbook with 10 consecutive empty pages in it. And there are a few things in here, as you can see. But then, uh, after this stuff, there are, thankfully, some empty pages. So we're just going to start drawing, like right here. And then these pens, I'm not going to use them in the same order in which they were introduced. Uh, but I'm just going to... Gonna, gonna kind of just grab them in the order in which I wanna. I think I'm actually going to start with this Lamy Safari. The, the Lamy Safari is one of my first fountain pens I ever bought. And I bought two Lamy Safaris at a stationery store in downtown Chicago. And then I promptly put the wrong kind of ink in them. I put mm, India ink in them, which is a lot more gummy and sticky than regular fountain pen ink and they promptly got gummed up and stickied up and i was discouraged and then i didn't use fountain pens for about two years and this is one of those original fountain pens which i've since then ungummy done stickied uh and so we're going to use it in this i have put the mariner 4 ink by colorverse i actually did get sent Look at this. Now this is some cool swag right here. A Colorverse napkin. That's pretty cool. Colorverse napkin. They also sent me some nice little uh, Colorverse stickers. I think these are maybe all the colors they have. Here's the Mariner one we're using. And then uh, later in the video, I'll also use the Allen Hills one. Mariner 4 was a spacecraft launched in 1964, which performed the first successful flyby of Mars, providing some photos of the surface, etc. All right, so that's what I've put in this pen already. It's, it's ready to go. I will say that in the process of cleaning and refilling all of these 10 pens, I did use a couple of paper towels and they ended up looking like this. I think they are uh, pretty pretty. Look at that. I like all the colorful splotches on the paper towels. Sometimes it's prettier than the ink we intended to make, right? I mean, the drawings or whatever. So there's a little preview of some of the colors we're gonna see today. All right, let's start drawing. I'm gonna draw. Each one is gonna get its own page and they might mix up a little bit, you'll see. So I will admit we are starting here with what is not a bad ink, but what what is maybe the most or least exciting ink of all of the inks we are going to be using today. And coming from me, it's a little bit hypocritical coming from someone who typically uses black ink, right? Well, to me, black ink is the most exciting ink because that's where all the... That's where all the contrast is. You put black ink on black paper, right? It's like day and night, black and white, right? That's where all the, the, the fun happens. You put blue ink on white paper or green or white or, or, or yellow. Oh, did I just say white ink? You put any other color of ink besides black on white paper. It's just by definition less exciting when you look. The, just the, you know what I mean? It's... That's just the most contrast you can get. Not that that's a good excuse for me to always be using black ink. But anyway, so we have a very, a very dark navy blue ink, the Mariner 4 ink here, and uh, it's just going to get better. It's for uh, I think a lot of people really do think that uh, colorful inks are more exciting, and I think it's good to try these out every now and then because I do enjoy them on occasion. I have a lot of colorful inks now, thankfully, and 
I don't think I'm going to be using them all the time. I think probably 95% of the time I'm still just going to keep on using black inks. Which means if I ever want to keep using any of these pens, I'm going to have to rinse them back out again. Basically what I do when I rinse out a pen is uh, I just hold it on, on under the faucet for a while. I put, well, it, it, it it's just water. I don't use soap or any special sort of uh, cleansing fluid, but I use a lot of water, okay? It's probably not the best way because there are people out there who don't even have clean water, but uh, I put a cup under the faucet and run the faucet into the cup so that it's the like the pint glass is continually getting refreshed. And then uh, like if it's a piston pen, I continually fill and empty the, the, the piston while the front of the pen is submerged into that glass. I think I've probably shown it at least once in a video. Also, I just want to say thank you, everyone. I think I, I've hit 900,000 subscribers now, so that's thanks to all of you. I appreciate it. Uh, here's to a million. The only thing I'm afraid of is... I feel like everyone's expecting something big for 1 million subscriber special, but I gotta be honest, that's not really my style. I don't really do big crazy videos and I don't really imagine I'm going to suddenly become a different kind of YouTuber who does do big crazy videos when I suddenly hit a million, you know, it's just going to be like, Hey, I have a million now. If I ever do get there, I will. Okay. I will. I'll do it. Hopefully. I think. All right. That's a pretty good start, I think. The Lamy Safari Mariner 4 ink. Uh, it's a very dark, like, navy blue. It almost... I don't know if you can tell very well, but it is dark blue. Uh, maybe it'll become more apparent after we add another color next to it. I think next... We should use the Moonman M2, in which I have put Tokyo Gift. That's right, this is this ink right here. Tokyo Gift. A nice kind of reddish ink. It says a friendship that was hard won and is now enduring for ages. I'm not sure what that means exactly, but something about... There's American and Japanese flags on there. Anyways, this is a pen in which the whole reservoir of the body of the, I mean, I mean the whole body of the pen is the reservoir for the ink. So you just, you pour it in there with an eyedropper. I used this eyedropper right here, which you can see I still <laughs> been lazy and haven't cleaned out from uh, the last one of these I filled up. Shame on me. You can use any old eyedropper. You can even use a syringe. A syringe would probably be easier actually, less likely to make a mess. It's very easy to make a mess with an eyedropper and ink. The main downside of a Moonman M2 that I've found is that it's completely round. There's no uh, there's no clip or flat spot on it anywhere, so it can just endlessly roll, which is which is cool. I like that, uh, and I like its design, how how clear it is, and the red accents and the gold nib, but it is very rolly. All right, let's try it out. I'm gonna start by drawing a little. Uh, border around the opposite page and then we can actually I've made this little part of the video too soon because what I want to do is keep using the Lamy Safari tiny bit and draw use this blue pen to draw a border for the the red ink you'll see you'll see let's go all right well I will say that this pen I like it I like drawing with it it has a feeling of sharpness it feels very crisp when you draw with it it could just be because it's a it's a very fine i don't know if it's the ef or f nib it's got to be one or the other but you know sometimes you draw with a fountain pen and it, it feels very buttery and smooth and this one is a little bit closer to feeling like drawing with a like a glass dip pen a little bit more inflexible which is the real word here? I'm supposed to be using inflexible, unflexible, rigid, right? And it's not a bad feeling. 
I also like the buttery smooth ones, the ones that flex and, and, and flow, right? This one does not have flow problems. I'm not trying to suggest that. It's just uh, you really do feel like you're drawing with a, a shard of metal. And that's really what's going on here. And it, the, the, the feeling of the nib, I think subconsciously does contribute to the type of drawing I do. If I feel like I'm drawing with the, the tip of like a scalpel blade, then I probably do try to draw more uh, like precise things and I am less likely to get loose and sketchy with it. It can still happen, but I have to deliberately push myself into that territory, right? But if I'm drawing with a pen nib that feels a little bit looser and squishier and the, the, the ink just kind of flows out of it and just goes everywhere, then I just feel myself going everywhere. And you'll see that later in this video. Um, I think I do a pretty good job at this video of getting a pretty good variety of drawings. They don't all look the same. I have a few where it's like careful blobs squished together, some that look a little bit more like machinery, a few weird uh, abstract portraits. If you want to see all of these drawings um, at your own speed, in the description, I'll put a link to an Instagram post where I've, where I've put all of these. I was thinking, hey, 10 is the perfect number of these to do because at least last time I checked, 10 is the maximum number of posts or images you can put in one Instagram post. But then I thought, hey, I'm going to be posting one page spread at a time, so it's really only going to be five posts. Maybe I'll do another post with a picture of all the pens and another post with a picture of all the inks and maybe another group shot with all the pens and the inks and this sketchbook together and then that'll be seven photos and we'll call it a day there. I don't know. At this point in time, I haven't taken any of the pictures yet, but I also feel bad because some people might on Instagram might see, they might see all the pictures first and then come in here and it'll be spoiled, but it's not like I'm writing a novel here with a twist ending, so... It's okay. Some people, some people have mentioned to me that they avoid my Instagram because they don't want to see the pictures on Instagram before they see them on here. So I'm not really sure. Sometimes I do post them on Instagram before they, my videos appear on YouTube. So what's the best course of action there? Even if I wait to post it on Instagram um, until after I post the video on YouTube, you could still see it on Instagram before you see it on YouTube, because who's to say when you watch the YouTube video? You, it could take you a day or a year to watch on, I don't, I, don't, I don't know the order in which you comb through social media. All right, the first two drawings done. Also, did you know that you can use post-it notes to create super fab claws for your fingers? Rawr. But I will say it is hard to pick up pens with this, and I definitely cannot draw with these on my fingers. All right, next page. Ooh, look, it didn't bleed through too much. I will say I am super determined to not skip any pages, so let's see if this one bled through at all. Not too much. I'm just gonna, it bled through a tiny bit, but I'm just gonna draw away anyways. Um, next, I think we're gonna use, let me take these off. Wait, I never labeled this one. Moon Man. I'm kind of running out of room. Put it down here. M1 Tokyo Gift. There we go. Nice. Now, we're gonna use another reddish one, because I think that'll help. It'll just help. Especially since there's some red bleeding through already. Dry. We're gonna use the J. Herbin uh, fountain pen, which someone told me this is actually a French brand, Jacques Herbin, or something like that. Jacques Herbin, Herbin, Jacques Herbin. That sounds right. 
And in this is the Park Red ink. This ink right here, Park Red. Basically, this one is named after a North Korean defector who uh, escaped to South Korea. And as you can see here, I think, does his best to organize efforts to send flash drives and stuff into North Korea. And here you can see, what's his name? Trying to shoot them down with an anti-aircraft cannon. Pretty sick. All right. So, Jacques Herbin with the Park Red. Cheers. So, I forgot to record the beginning of this drawing. Have, have you ever stubbed your toe or your knee or something and then you do one of those little silent jigs, a little dance where you spin around in the floor, in the middle of the floor, and you're just, you're like holding your breath, you're holding everything in, and you're just dancing. And that's what I did when I realized I wasn't recording for the beginning of this video, because everything had been going perfectly up until then, up until I realized I had laid down a number of lines uh, without the the camera recording. I jumped up and I was like, and I danced around the middle of the floor. And then the moment passed and everything was okay. And I thought, hey, the only thing I can do here is start recording and keep drawing. And I'll explain to them what happened. I'll explain to them about the little dance I did. And they'll know how much it matters to me and I'm sorry. Okay. Anyways, you'll, you get to see most of the drawing here anyways. You can assume what happened beforehand. I, I don't know why I'm so intent on including a video record of every single line I draw anyways. I think there are other drawing channels where they like they kind of skip ahead. They like hop, skip, jump through their drawings. I don't really watch any other drawing channels because, uh, well, for reasons. It's hard to explain. Nothing negative, I assure you. It's just problems with my own, problems in my own brain, to be honest. But I'll just keep doing things the way I'm trying to do things, unless I figure out a good reason not to. Uh, anyways, I like this drawing. This one is definitely inspired by looking at pictures of uh, engines and, well, mostly engines, various industrial or mechanical things. This pen worked pretty good. I think in the, I kept on saying Jacques Herbin, but I think it's really Jacques Herbin, Herbin maybe. I'm sorry, I think the more I try to pronounce Jacques Herbin, the more I make a fool of myself. So I should probably just stop now, but the pen worked pretty good. Uh, no major complaints here. The, the main complaint I have is that it didn't feel like a very high quality pen, but I'm, also not sure how much it cost. It could just, you know, I, I hope it doesn't cost more than like 15 or $20 because I hadn't even really used it much. And like the letters on the side of it, J. Herbin, as I'll say, uh, were already rubbing off. So like I said, it just didn't feel like quality in my hand. Like some of the other pens, like for example, if you ever hold a Twisby Eco, uh, it just feels it just feels like quality. Maybe the quality of the plastic and the fact that they give you like a little, a little. It comes with a little wrench and some some grease to 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 grease the piston, right? It's just they, if you feel like they care about you, they've thought of everything. They want you to have a good experience. And then with this pen, is, I just kind of feel like they're like, "Hey, here's a pen with our name on it." And I'm just like, "Okay, I guess it works. Ink is coming out of it wherever I." pointed onto the paper. It just feels like a little bit too casual almost, but that could be what some people are going for. And ultimately, as you can see, I drew a picture with it, so I shouldn't complain too much, but I'm not really complaining, just saying thoughts out loud. It's kind of my job sometimes, so not the end of the world. Okay, here we go. That was a drawing with the J. Herbin I mean, Jacques Herbin, Park Red. Um, for some reason, some of the ink seems to like feather a little bit more than other bar parts. Maybe it's the, depends on which part of the paper we're on, or maybe some of the ink is like, 
different inconsist different consistencies. I don't know. Anyways, um, yeah, I think it turned out pretty good. This pen. Well, I was about to tell you some stuff about it, but hopefully I've already said the stuff about it in the commentary right before this. Next, I think we're gonna use the Twisby Eco. This little guy right here. Oh, it's a pretty pen. Pretty pen, but not for a pretty penny. Well, it's probably about 30 bucks. I don't know, I haven't really been telling you how much these pens cost. Um, I don't know, you can do your own research. There's a lot more I could be telling you. And in this pen we have Navajo Turquoise. Where is that one? Here it is, Navajo Turquoise. This is one of the pen, one of the inks I've used in a previous video, but um, I shouldn't assume everyone's watched all of my videos, although I know some of you have. So this will be next, although I think I'm gonna do this drawing, uh, this next drawing tomorrow, so hopefully the next time you see me, I will be wearing different clothes, hopefully. That was pretty good. I did three little drawings this evening. Uh, good progress. Three out of 10, not bad. All right. You remember what I said earlier about the type of nib you use and the feeling the nib has on the paper influencing what you draw? I think that happened again here with the Twisby Eco. Uh, it feels very smooth and uh, maybe even the the ink influenced what I draw, drew here because it kind of felt like I was drawing with a mini waterfall in my between my fingertips, like a little babbling brook was flowing out from between my fingers. And it's kind of what ended up appearing on the paper is, as you'll see, uh, the, the nib was smooth and, and of course the, the ink was blue that helped. Now, of course, water isn't really blue. I guess that's just the sky reflecting on it, but uh, it's just very, very, it felt very generous. And uh, as, as opposed to a couple of other, the pens that, uh, that we use in this video, some of them feel, you know, sharper, scratchy, even just because they're finer nibs, you get less ink per line. This was a lot of ink per line and it felt like a very kind of exotic ink because it's such a rich bright blue i had a great time with it i filled up the whole frame that i drew for it and i don't know this is probably one of the favorite ones i used in this video i like the you know the, one of the nice things about using ink like this as opposed to just black ink is that you can get subtle variations of color as it you know is like a light blue or sometimes the the, the ink gathers a little bit in one corner and then you get like a slightly darker blue and it is just a little bit more interesting to look at. I like it. I like it. I do. Almost felt like what I draw, drew here was not a waterfall or a babbling brook, but sometimes there's like a, some rapids and way down in the corner of the rapids, like maybe I looked very closely at there's a rock right here and another rock, and there's a little, maybe a trickle of water, maybe a, a whole gush, a gush of water coming over one rock here and crashing into the top of another rock, and, and then one other gush of water crashing sideways into that, and there's like a whole, a, like a chunk of frothy, frothy water. I feel like that's kind of what I drew. Kind of like the intersection of a few uh, energetic flows of water, if you know what I mean. I think that's kind of what I drew in my own little way. And, uh, I don't know. I liked what happened here. I, I'm a big fan of the Twisby Eco. I should use it more often. And this is, this was a broader pen and, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I liked it. I liked it. I'd recommend it to almost anyone. Okay. Number four down. And I did make a little mistake here in that I didn't leave any space an actual drawing to write what pen and ink I used. And then I, so I just went over here to the previous drawing and then I misspelled Twisby Eco. But uh, in my defense, Twisby is a weird word. As you can see how it's really supposed to be spelled T-W-S-B-I. Uh, that's just how I pronounce it. I'm not sure if that's even supposed to, how you're supposed to say it, Twisby. I have an extra I in there. 
and then I ran out of word for the word turquoise, which is a deceptively long word. And anyways, this is probably the, the broadest nib I've used so far. Hopefully I've discussed it previously in the video. Um, okay, next, what have I not used so far? Oh no, I'm, I'm just now realizing that over here on this page where I wrote Moon Man M1, this is actually supposed to say Moon Man M2. I wonder if it's fixable. Yeah, it looks more like a two now. Okay. We have six pens left. How about on the next page we boot we do both of the remaining Moon Men. That is the Moon Man C1, which I think I will do first. Another blue pen because, like I said, since there is a little bit of blue leaking through, kind of a bluish background, I want to do some more blue. This is Baltimore Canyon blue with the moon man c1 and i do like this pen it's uh another one i don't know I, I like these moon man pens they're like nice and clear crisp uh this one also looks kind of rolly but it has a flat edge right here so it doesn't uh well it's kind of lying backwards the flat edge ended up on top there's the flat edge and here's the ink we're going to use from Noodler, Baltimore Canyon Blue. It says, blue whales and blue crabs flow better with Baltimore Canyon Blue. As you can see in the background, behind the whale and the crab, there is a map. Um, up here is Baltimore. There's the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, and then you can see the continental shelf right here. And... Uh, apparently there's this spot right here where it's a popular like deep water fishing spot where people go fishing. That's what I've gathered from my very brief research. And I guess that's what this is named after. And as you can see just by looking at the bottle, it looks like a very vibrant kind of blue. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see some more as we get a little into it. That's why I, I, I put it into this pen because it has such a, another big reservoir. It's not a, it's not a piston like like the the Lamy Safari. I felt like this this vibrant blue would be lost because like all the ink in this Lamy Safari is in this little section right here, but in this pen it fills up this whole big section. Plus it kind of matches uh, this swirly glittery area right here. So I don't know. It just made me happy. All right, let's do this here. So, once again, with another incredible shade of blue and a pen I also enjoy, I forgot once again to record at the beginning of the video. As you'll see later, I, I, I quickly learned how to fix this problem. I was holding myself back in a way I shouldn't have been by stopping and starting the recording of my camera, and I could have just let it keep going forever. Since I have very large and spacious memory cards, uh, but this, I ended up drawing like a weird little abstract face. It wasn't going to be a face, but every now and then I'm just drawing a bunch of shapes. And then you'll see that you can just kind of add something that looks like an eye in there or even a nose. I added an eye and a nose and then a mustache, but you can add something as simple as an eye, right? Which is just a circle for, for like the iris and then a, like a pointed oval around it. And then your brain starts trying to figure out how everything else around it could be smushed together to be a face. Your brain starts trying to solve the puzzle even as you're drawing it. So, I don't know, to me this this face ended up kind of looking like a a weird version of a like a king from like a typical deck of playing cards. You know how those kings look? Like that, but maybe had been through a blender and gotten a few face tumors or uh, maybe just benign growths. And it's just sitting there doing its thing now. Maybe some of the skin is 
inside out. A few banners hanging down from it. I gave it a, I was going to draw like a straight up crown on the top of this guy's head, but I kind of ran out of room at the top of the paper, so I just gave it a, I gave, gave him a weird little round hat with some studs on it. And I think, I think that'll do him fine, and he should be content with that if he knows what's good for him. I, I kind of like doing this sometimes, the, the combination of recognizable features and just the, the general, the, the normal doodly shapes that I add, right? Kind of pulls it all together a little bit. Gives something the eyes to latch on to. You're like, that's a nose, that's an eye. Then the rest of it just kind of is dressing. I do wonder why that one ball, that one that one crevice in the in the the Baltimore Canyon that I, that I want to hear the how does Noodler name their inks? It really is what I'm wondering. Is it over coffee in the break room? Is it fans sending in suggestions? Is it while they're like watching TV? Were they watching some like deep water fishing show and? There was an episode about the Baltimore Canyon where they were fishing, and they're like, hey, we should name a, an ink after that. I don't know. I'm just curious. It just seems so random. I mean, it sounds cool, but it does raise questions in my mind. It's a good blue. I like it. I'm still trying to decide if I liked... I, I might like the previous blue better, which was that... Uh... That was the Nav Navajo turquoise. Well, they're both good. The Navajo turquoise was slightly more, was a slightly lighter blue. And this, the Baltimore Canyon blue is slightly closer to like royal blue. All right, and there it is. A very nice drawing in blue with the Moon Man C1. I think it turned out very well. I like that. And I've already drawn the next border. And then next up we have the Moon Man T1. Um, I know we, there's like a lot of Moon Man pens, but that's all right. After I picked out all these pens, I thought these were all the de clear or demonstrator pens I have, but then afterwards I did realize there were a couple of others, including this one. Uh, but I have just used this, the Twisby Go. I just used this in a recent video where I was drawing with the, the glow ink that you can see in there. Oh, yeah. See, see how it glows into the black light? So I did a video with that. So I used it pretty recently. Don't feel too bad about missing out on that one. And then here's another one I have that's clear. This is the Opus 88, and I have modded this one to have uh, a Pilot Parallel nib in there, which is a calligraphy nib, meaning it has a very broad, broad nib, right? So this one's mo modded. It's kind of Frankenstein. I like to call it. So I could have used that one. Didn't. It's okay. I've used this one in several videos also. You could probably search for it if you're interested. But, yes. Uh, nope. This one. The Moon Man T1 with Photon ink. As you can see, this is, as you can see, maybe, is kind of a, a bluish green. There's probably all sorts of names for all of the colors between blue and green, or when you try to mix them. As you may know, photons are, I don't really know how to describe it. They are light transmitting particles. Light is carried through space by photons, perhaps? <clears throat> I don't know. Anyways, we're gonna do this next drawing with photon ink in the Moon Man T1. They're kind of oddly named. I get them all mixed up. Moon Man T1, C1, M2. Also, I am, I am drinking some Lapsang Sushong tea. Very nice and smoky. I was just reading that Lapsang Sushong tea was initially going to be the tea that Captain Picard was going to drink in Star Trek when it was initially revealed that Captain Picard was a avid tea drinker, but but then people the the producers were afraid that no one would know what Lapsang Sushong was, so they just went with Earl Grey instead. I, well, I didn't know what Lapsang Sushong was before I got some of this from a viewer recently. Um, but I might have known what it was if they had had it in Star Trek. 
Not that I watched a lot of Star Trek, but you know, sometimes you gotta, you know, push forward into the future with some new teas on a TV show. I probably only knew knew what Earl Grey was because I saw it on TV or something. So, who knows? Okay. Our sixth drawing coming right up. And hopefully I won't forget to record the beginning of this one. For some reason, I stop the recording and start it a lot. And I probably shouldn't. I should just let it roll because this has about 15 hours of recording left. But I, I keep on stopping and starting it before my little talking segments so that I guess to make it easier for editing to find the different segments, but I shouldn't because it's negatively impacting the process instead of making it easier. So for now on, I'm not touching that recording button. Button. Just let it roll. Let me know what some of, uh, some of y'all's favorite inks and ink colors are, ink brands, types. Um, there are a lot of different inks out there, different companies making inks, incredible, incredible inks. Are y'all into the shimmery glittery stuff? Because it really, it boggles my mind to imagine the, the, those tiny minuscule pieces of glitter flowing through the mechanism of a fountain pen and not clogging it up. Right. That's crazy to me, but I guess it's small enough that it works. It just works. Uh, this, this photon ink is a, it's a fairly pleasant color to me. It's almost the same color as some of, uh, the, the labels of some of the clips in my video editing program. I'm just now realizing, which, um, Adobe Premiere Pro calls Caribbean, which is about on the opposite end of the spectrum as you can get from photon something extremely scientific to something like, hey, let's go to the Caribbean. But they're pretty close colors. I do guess, I, I would I would secede that Photon does look a little bit more uh, scientific. Whatever you want to take, however you want to take that, it does look a little bit more maybe electrified. <laughs> It doesn't really matter what you call these colors anyways. I think we've learned that a long time ago. <laughs> Probably my, f you can, you can um, change the, the labels or the, the colors of different clips and stuff in Adobe Premiere Pro. Some of my favorite ones are Mango, which is a very nice warm orangish yellow. And uh, uh, well, a really bad one. Well, Forest, I think. It's kind of a, a greener, greener than Caribbean. There's one that's like really dark that I don't like. Oh, teal is awful. It's not a good teal at all. I've seen much better teals. Rose is nice. And I would... Oh, purple is the worst. Definitely purple is the worst. It's like the darkest one. It, all of the rest of these are nice pastel colors. And then purple is just like... <laughs> right in there, really dark and ominous. It's like maybe the worst purple I've ever seen. And there's even, brown is even an option, and brown looks better than purple somehow. Anyways, I know you can't see any of the things I'm clicking on right now, but uh, yeah, there you have it. Okay, good job. That's two more Moon Men down. Excellent. Uh, how many is that so far? One, two. Uh, this one did get a little sloppier with the uh, stuff bleeding through, but it's okay. That's just how it goes sometimes. The nature of the beast. Wait, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is looking very pretty so far. I like it. Very colorful. That's new for me. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm bad at counting. All right. Number seven. We will start with our questionable pen, which maybe someone knows what this is. I actually do like this a lot because uh, almost, 
Unlike a lot of these other demonstrators, almost every one of these demonstrators has some parts that aren't actually clear, right? Uh, well, I mean, this does too, right? It has uh, this little, like the black part in here. But this has more parts that are clear, I think, than any of the other pens. For example, even the feed is clear. Most of these other pens have uh, ebonite feeds, or maybe feeds made of some other thing that isn't ebonite, but usually the feeds aren't plastic, just like clear plastic, and perhaps that's for a good reason. Maybe clear plastic feeds don't work quite as well. Maybe we'll find out why, but uh, got some nice purple ink in here. What is it? The Purple Martin. I looked up this bird, the Purple Martin, on Wikipedia, and it said they're, that they're not truly purple. They're blackish blue, and then they have a sheen that only makes them look purple. Well, seeing is believing. I feel like nothing is truly any color. It's just the light that bounces off of it, isn't it? So if it has a purple sheen, then it is purple, is it not? This post-it note isn't orange. That's just, that's just that there's orange wavelengths of light bouncing off of it. Like, color isn't a physical property of an object. I don't know, it was just a confusing thing that they said. Anyways, carrying on, let's start drawing with the question mark pen and purple, purple Martin ink. Now, I don't know where I got this pen, where it came from. Someone, I think someone must have sent it to me. Um, thank you whoever it was. I don't think I bought this on my own. Thank you, whoever sent it to me. I want to sincerely apologize for never have, never have having used it before. It, this pen, I, I mean, I've been sleeping on it. It's, uh, I really enjoyed using this pen. It draws very fine, crisp lines, which because the, the lines are so fine and crisp, I found myself doing a very fine and crisp drawing. Uh, it took, it took longer than some of the previous drawings just because I found myself doing so many details, like I couldn't help myself. Uh, and at the end of the drawing, when I label it, you know, I write the pen name and the ink name. I just wrote question mark, question mark, question mark pen. Uh, but inevitably someone, you know, by the time I, you know, by the time you watch this, there will probably be someone in the comments who will have identified the pen. So, uh, you could probably just scroll around a bit and you can figure out what it is. But right now, at this current time, the true nature of this pen is unknown to me. I guess, no, 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 no. I should, I should take that back. The true nature of the pen is known to me because I've, I've used it. I have become intimately acquainted with it. Me and this pen are, I would say, close friends. I have filled it with Purple Martin ink. I have used it to draw a small picture or two. And now I, I, I do feel that I know it. I know everything but its name. And after you know something that closely, does its name really matter? I don't think so. After I find out its name, maybe I'll change my tune. But, like, for example, if I found out this was made by, like, Muji or something, that might rock my world a little bit in some weird way. I don't know what that would do to me, but it would be weird. It would be very weird. It would also explain some things, because Muji does typically not put its name on its, uh, on its products. I don't think it's Muji, but it kind of would make sense. Did I tell y'all that Muji USA went bankrupt? Y'all heard the news, right? It's not my fault. I did my part. I bought, I bought more than I should have. I tried. Okay. You can still buy Muji stuff though. You just have to buy it probably online from, from the original, the Muji Japan. 
I still have those. I still have, I have two, I have two aluminum Muji fountain pens in active use. And then I still have, I have 10 backup Muji fountain pens that I was trying to do a giveaway with, but I still just couldn't figure out the best, most, uh, just efficient way to do a giveaway with these things because you just always have to do like, just always having to sign up for stuff. I don't want people to have to put in their like emails and stuff to another website. I don't know. Doing giveaways is hard. I wish it was easy. I wish, you know, I wish I could just like throw them out the window and then 10 of y'all would have them. Okay, and there we have it. Uh, another drawing in Purple Martin. And then to accompany it, we are going to grab this pen over here, the Pen BBS 266. Well, I don't know what to say about it, except that uh, I remember having good feelings about it. I think I've really only used it a few times, like the time I bought it and reviewed it. And I just have, it's a bad problem having too many pens, because then even if you do kind of like a pen, you just have a lot of other pens and you use those and you don't come back around to another pen that you might that you might like, like this one. So that's why a video like this is nice, because I come back to the pens. Anyways, inside of inside of this pen is another bird named ink, Cardinal Kestrel from Noodler Ink. And I don't know if uh I don't know what a Cardinal Kestrel is. This is a very interesting bottle art. If you Google, you know, if you look up Cardinal Kestrel, I know Cardinal is a type of bird, Kestrel is a type of bird. Uh, there's a dead bird here. Maybe it has something to do with baseball. There's like a baseball diamond here. There's some like blue jays, I think this is. I don't know what these dead birds are. There must be some inside story here I don't know about. I think this is just a cardinal. But look, its claws are covered in blood like it's killing all these other birds. Maybe they're turning it into some sort of hybrid uh, bird of prey. That's the kestrel part. I don't know. Anyways, it's a red ink, as you can see in here. And uh, yeah, I'm going to start by drawing a frame around here, and then we're going to draw a picture in here. Now, this drawing was a very, very luscious shade of red. And I'll say it was another kind of mechanical one. I started it right there from the one of the ink splotches. And I think the ink splotches at first were, they were really just alarming to me. I wasn't, I wasn't. Somehow I was not at all dismayed by these ink splotches. Maybe I've just been trained over the years to not get dismayed at things like that. I was definitely far, far more discouraged when I, when I forget to record than when I <laughs> make smudges or splotches in my drawings. <laughs> if I make a terrible mistake in one of my drawings, as <laughs> as long as I'm recording it, I don't I don't get upset. Um, Anyways, this drawing is definitely another mechanical inspired one, maybe inspired by the flow of lines in things like electrical circuit boards, just the general ways lines fit together in, in, in machinery. And I think at the end of the drawing, you may notice what looks like a, uh, up at the top, something that looks similar to a helicopter rotor, right? Is that what they're called? It's not a propeller. If, propellers go on the front of planes but now i'm second guessing because do helicopters have two rotors they have one on top and then another one on the tail often right is that just called a tail rotor and then one on top is it's got blades okay i'm thinking of all just trying to off the top of my head trying to pull some vo vocab it's got to be a rotor but the more i say it the weirder the word sounds rotor rotor helicopter rotor anyways i think uh you know because at some point in my life i've i was looking at some pictures of like the machine the mechanical the innards the machinery that holds like a helicopter rotor together and it's fascinating and so i think that kind of squished back out through my brain onto the paper right there obviously not entirely correct i don't think you could look at this drawing and use it to recreate uh anything that could get close to flying but that's not the point at all it's fine in fact, I think I like the splotches on this paper. 
it kind of helps tie the two drawings together across across the two pages. Also, I like that border I drew with all the little semicircles. I like that pattern. I don't think I've ever done a pattern just like that. I do recycle. I recycle patterns, and lots of times when you recycle them, like the border on the right, definitely done stuff like that before. Sometimes you make subtle changes, and then you store, store away in your mind, like, do I like the change I made? Do I not? Should I do it again next time? Maybe I'll make another little change. I never did anything quite like those little bumps, those little semicircles. So I definitely store that that one away in the the thumbs up category of my brain for cool borders and, and patterns. It doesn't actually just have to be a border. Like you could make a tentacle. I make lots of tentacly things, right? And you could make a tentacle that kind of look like that. You'll probably see it pop up again in my drawings at some point in the future. Stay tuned. Okay. Okay. Eight down. Um, my lips are numb because I realized I have this kind of, I don't know if it's a nervous tick, but it's like one of those things you do when you're concentrating, a concentration tick. One of those things you do when you're concentrating, you don't really realize it. I, I like pull my lips into my mouth between my teeth like this. And then I run, I just endlessly run my tongue back and forth along them. I can't really show you because it's happening inside my mouth and I'm sure it sounds really weird what I'm trying to describe. I just kind of go like this <laughs> with my tongue. I don't know. It, anyways, I don't realize I'm doing it, but I do it as I concentrate and draw these lines and... My lips are like tingling and numb right now. Um, anyways, all right. Our final page spread. And we have up next the hex pen. When I reviewed this, it was sent to me by, I think, the person who made it. It's 3D printed somehow, I think. I'm not sure exactly how all it works, but... Uh, when I made this, a lot of people were like, Peter, uh, it's a knockoff of some other pen where it's 3D printed and there's a spiral in it. And I'm like, guys, if if no one else is allowed to make spirally 3D printed pens, then like, then no one, we'd never have pens at all because then the first person would have made a pen and then no one else would have been able to make pens after that because they would have all just been knockoffs and ripoffs and hey, this has enough things different with it that I think it's, it counts as innovation and movement in the right direction. All right. I looked at those pens y'all were talking about. For It has a lot of things different. First of all, this has two separate spirals, right? A double helix to be, to be precise and lines going in between them like a DNA strand. None of those pens y'all were talking about had that. And this opens up on both ends. So it's very easy to clean. None of those pens y'all are talking about did that. I don't even remember the name of that company, but if I ever, I will probably get one of those pens and try it sometime. I'm not, I'm not trying to bash that company or those pens. I'm not trying to bash this one. I'm just trying to be like, why, why can there only be one type of everything? We, everyone can try everything. I might try making one of these once, you know, it's just like, it's okay. It's all right. Anyways, in here, um, what ink do I have in here? I have the Allen Hills, this tiny little bottle right here. Allen Hills was where a meteorite landed in a place called Allen Hills in Antarctica, I think. And they, they think it's from a meteorite from Mars. They, they suspect. And this is a really nice green ink you're going to see me use here. And uh, it's a, this is a pretty broad nib also. There's a little tiny B on it right here. So this should go pretty fast. It seems like like this one, this drawing took me a while because it's a very fine nib. And this one will probably go a little faster because it's a broader nib. It's just, it just is, okay. This was another pen that gave me really bold, generous lines. The ink really flowed out of it. I will say this one, and the Lamy Safari were the only two pens 
that I had to struggle at all with to get lines to draw. And I only mean that in, in that sometimes I would move the pen across the paper, maybe about half a centimeter and no ink would come out. And then I would try again, another half a centimeter, and then the ink would come out that time. Okay, that's all I'm talking. All the other pens, every single pen stroke, the ink would come out. The, the, and so I'm just, I'm also including the fact that it happened with the Lamy Safari just because this is a pen made by like a college student, I think, uh, who has access to like a cool type of 3D printer. And so I don't want y'all to think that it's just like a problem made with like production value or something, or it's just because this is uh, like a rookie pen or something. It could be a problem with the ink, or maybe I didn't clean it all the way, or maybe it is a production value thing. But I think the previous time I used this pen, when I first reviewed it, it worked fine, but it did give me a slight tiny bit of problems. I'm just saying this to compare it with all the other pens I used here today. And but other than that, uh, the green was really pretty. And if if I never took it up, pulled it up off the paper and just kept on drawing endlessly, it it was a dream, right? This the ink just flowed. It just flowed and I will admit at this point, as I was recording these videos, I think the first three videos I recorded one day and then the last seven I recorded all the next day. And at this point it was getting pretty late and I was getting pretty tired, which might explain why this is maybe a slightly less intricate or detailed or I don't know, this drawing just took it. I, it might be obvious just to see that it took me less time and that's okay too. Not every drawing has to be uh, a drawing that you put a million hours into. In fact, I think that is, I mean, I'll, I'll say it. Sometimes that's something that bothers me in that sometimes some people, some artists, they suggest that, they, it seems like sometimes they suggest that one of, just by the way they present their art along with how long it took them is that people should like it just because it took them a certain length of time, like, hey, here's my drawing. It took me 400 hours. And sometimes I'm just like, yeah, well, maybe I shouldn't have, you know? Maybe you could have, maybe you could have done 400 other awesome one hour drawings in that time. And just in my opinion, I don't know, something isn't great just because you spend more time on it. I'm not saying it's great when you spend less time on it. I'm just like some, I feel like some people have a weird mindset that just if we, uh, I've been there too. I used to, I used to post these videos and be like, you know, 30 hour drawing, you know, and I would just pour myself into it. And it, I, I get that it's like, it becomes kind of a meditative state and you just, you do lose track of time. So it doesn't feel like 400 hours, but also, you say it's 400 hours because people immediately ask when they see a crazy drawing, how long did this take? So you might as well just get it out of the way. So anyways, just nitpicking. Don't pay me too much attention, okay? Don't. Don't. Don't you. Don't you pay attention to me. All right. Uh, oop. I, I just realized I stopped a little prematurely. I forgot to draw the next border here, but I'll do that in a second. Also, this part here. Hexpen Allen Hills 84001. I think 84001. It's here on the bottle too. That's part of the name of the piece of meteorite that fell. It's like some identification code. Also, see, why is this so... I guess it's the... See how this is feathering so much? I guess it's just the spots where it puts down a little bit more ink feather a little bit more, I guess. I don't know, this, these lines are just as dark and they didn't feather quite as much. It seems like the lower I go down on the paper, the more it tends to feather, but I don't know it could, if that could possibly be the case. I'm trying to look back across some of these other drawings and see if it also happened there. I mean, it was very feathery here. Maybe it's just for these short strokes, you get all of the ink in one little place, the short strokes that you get when writing these little letters. I don't know. Not sure, not sure, it's all right. Anyways, the next pen we're gonna use, put the lid on this real quick, is the final pen. 
the final pen, the final ink. All of this is a little bit different. The tenth pen and the tenth ink are are, are, are different in, in, in certain ways. First of all, this is a noodler pen with, uh, well, not noodler ink, with colorverse ink. But it's a noodler pen, and uh, it does stink a little bit because they use some sort of they recycle like biological materials in here or something like it's like compostable or recyclable or something. And I remember when I first got my Noodler Ahab, it smelled so bad. This is the Noodler Triple Tail, which I've showed in a video before. And that means instead of having one split down the middle of the nib, it has two splits, which allows the nib to uh, split even wider, right? Or like this. And so you can you have uh, the capacity for very broad strokes. In fact, I think it was designed for d drawing uh, music notation. You can just go like bloop, draw like a quarter note, I guess. I don't know. Um, anyways, I, I'm not an expert at that part. But in here, we have a different type of ink that we've seen so far. That is the Stars and Stripes. The keyword here is glistening. Ooh glistening. There's another version of this same ink that is normal or not glistening, but we have the glistening version and you can see uh, the glistening stuff has gathered on the bottom here. So you have to be careful, um, at least I do, you have to like shake it up first so that it's all, all the uh, little sparkles are suspended in the ink and then fill your pen up really fast. That's why I kind of usually have most of the time I just kind of avoid the glistening shimmering stuff because it's just kind of another step that you have to take. It's a little bit more of a pain, but I mean, I'm sitting here drawing with fountain pens. It's already a few more steps of, above pens in general, so I don't know why I'm complaining. Um, anyways, I mean, even you can see it here in the pen. I don't know if you can see it on the video, but I had the pen sitting on its side and all the uh, glitter has settled down to one side of the reservoir here. So, I mean, I don't really want to shake the pen because that happened back here and I shook the pen by accident and some ink came out onto the paper. You don't shake fountain pens or stuff comes flying out. But hopefully some of the glisteny stuff comes out and we get some uh, shimmery lines. So I'll start drawing here just as soon as I uh, grab the green pen again and uh, draw a little border for us. All right, this last drawing with the noodler triple tail and the, the glistening shimmery ink is, you know, this one didn't take me very long at all. Once again, each stroke of the nibbler triple tail, if you press down at all, those tines open wide up and you can just lay down these thick, juicy lines and it's fun. I'll tell you, it's fun. This one is a self-portrait of me. Uh, there were these days, thankfully, not recently, I'm doing better at getting out of the habit of eating like this. Uh, but there were these days when I used to order a medium buffalo chicken pizza from Domino's and eat the whole thing all by myself. And I, just saying that again, I feel feels dangerous because just saying it, I, I feel the urge, the hankering, the feeling of what that felt like. It was a weird mixture of good and awful because it tasted good and and you can feel your stomach. It's like, I don't know what there is, that what that feeling is about my stomach becoming full, like too full, becoming distended and... Like it feels good and bad. Like you, you also get full of like self disgust at the same time. Like why did I do that? But you also can't stop. Maybe I just have a problem. But I think I'm working on fixing the problem. Maybe part part of that is drawing myself as a weird ravenous, uh, bloated beast with shimmery ink. <laughs> Maybe that's not healthy at all. I don't know. Look. I'm just trying to work through it with art, okay? You're just watching me do art therapy, okay? I've just got to put it down on paper, and now I'm talking through it. Just work with me here, okay? Everything's going to be okay, that I'm sure of, and that's what matters, okay? We just can't be too hard on ourselves when things go a little bit haywire. Just patience, patience, and then we'll figure it out. Yeah, I, I like how it looks anyways. If it is me or isn't, I'm pretty sure it is me, though. 
Woo! All right, we're done. It's a little bit past my bedtime, but I stayed up, powered through it, and did it. All right. Oh yeah. Um, you can see the sheen a little bit better here if I uh, wiggle it around in the light. You see that? Ooh, shiny, shiny beast. Nice. It did, it does look pretty cool. The sheen. I will admit it. It makes it look like a holographic Pokemon card or maybe a passport or something, you know. It makes it look special for sure. Let's flip through all ten of these and make sure I actually did do ten. Let's see if I'm still good at counting. As good as I was before. One, two, three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. There we go. It worked great. That was a cool, that was a cool experiment. I mean, it just looks cool. I like, I, I do like the colors. I mean, I should, I should use, I should use colors more often. I should. I mean, I probably won't, but maybe I will. Anyways, thanks for watching, everyone. Really good to have you. I'll see you later, in the next video. All right. Goodbye. This is all a bad sign. This is all a bad sign.